morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you all for being here this morning. And today. Uh, the sun's out. The sun is out. Right. It's a nice crisp fall day, so you know, hence the apple pancakes and sausage. Um, this morning, you know, before I introduce our guest speaker, I just want to say our, our next men's breakfast will be Thursday, November 1st. And, and our speaker at that point will be our veteran service officer, Terry Hart. Well, you know, because it's Veterans Month, and so the, uh, that would be some, some you know, good time to have Terry come back and talk with us about changes in veteran services and additional information. I don't know yet what I'll make, but we'll make something good. So we'll be. Yeah, they probably started. <laughs> Steak, eggs, and mimosas. <laughs> but this morning, it's we're really very, very grateful to have our friend, Jason Abasher, who is the assistant superintendent with the Essex County Sheriff's Department, known and loved to us through the triad program, but um, he is also an attorney. And so, you know, we've always enjoyed having Jason with us, uh, but, you know, I thought this morning it would be good to be able to have him come and talk about some of the other work that he does, and durable power of attorney, health care proxy, all the advanced directed planning that we should have in place, no matter as we age. Yeah. So, so I'm going to go into the kitchen and clean, but Jason, thank you so much for being here. You're welcome. And this will be great. Thank you, Charlie, for taping this to get it out to people at home, too. And, and of course, Jason's already left me with a fistful of paper, so I'll, I, I'll have information back at the office on durable power of attorney and health care products. And uh, Jason's also passed me a, a, a flyer on our annual triad meeting, which will be scheduled Friday, November 9th, 9.30 to 11.30 at the Top School Fairgrounds this year. And the, All is welcome. The program is social bullying, which is uh, it's been a, a, an important topic to discuss. Uh, so that's, everybody's welcome to attend. There will be re um, coffee and refreshments too. Great. All right. All right. Thank you, Jason. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Good morning. As uh, I was introduced, uh, my name is Jason E. Basher. I am an assistant <coughs> superintendent at the Essex County Sheriff's Department. I've been with the department now for um, going on my 16th year now. And uh, started as an officer, worked my way up, to, you know, through the ranks, sergeant, lieutenant, captain, and now an assistant superintendent. And um, my main um, duty at the sheriff's department is I'm the director of training and staff development. Um, and encompassed within that is I'm also the director of the Triad program. Now, some of you have probably heard of Triad before. Yeah. Triad is a community outreach pro outreach program that we do with senior citizens throughout the county. We have 34 cities and towns in Essex County and we currently work with 32 of them right now. So Keeks is busy as myself and I have three other staff people that work with me and we go to all the senior centers, all the senior housing areas like this here at Trestle Way and give talks and, and provide safety and awareness programs for seniors. Some of the programs that we do is we go around and do, do lectures on particular topics, right. whether it's identity theft, whether it's senior bullying, um, drug disposal, many topics. I always I go around and I give talks. Uh, one of the topics that I do talk about is the power, the the importance of power of attorneys and healthcare proxies. As I was introduced, I'm also an attorney as well. I have my own law practice in North Andover, where I focus on estate planning, elder law, state administration. And I do a little construction law as well. I know construction law does not go hand in hand with estate planning, and, and there is a story behind that. My father's a plumber. And when I graduated from law school, my father was tickled pink because he knew he never had to pay an attorney ever again. <laughs> so now he's got me chasing every Tom, Dick, and Harry that owes the money. So if you owe my dad some money, you might be hearing from me. Right? He's, uh, he's my best non-paying client now. <laughs> Um, so I, those are the things I focus on. I do that part time. Obviously, I work full time for the sheriff's department, and um, and I go around and I give talks um, quite frequently on how important it is to have a proper power of attorney and healthcare proxy in place. Everybody over the age of eighteen should have these documents in place. It's not just for seniors; it's for everybody. Okay. So I handed out two handouts. One is the, uh, the uh, on power of attorneys, and the other one's on healthcare proxies. Everybody have a handout? Yeah. Good. We're going to start with the power of attorneys. 
Now, show of hands, who here has a power of attorney in place? Okay. Oh, you guys are good. Good, good, good. Very good. Now, what is a power of attorney? A power of attorney is a legal document that if you are incapacitated in some way, you're, you're still alive, you're incapacitated, you're giving somebody the authority to make your financial decisions for you if you can't. Okay? The document is only good while you're alive. Okay, so people a lot of times get that confused, get a power of attorney with an executor confused. Now in Massachusetts, we don't even use the term executor anymore. We use the term personal representative. Okay, that changed last year. So the term executor doesn't even exist anymore. It's personal representative. So a lot of people get the terms executor, personal representatives, and power of attorneys confused. Okay. But we're just speaking of power of attorneys, a power of attorney, like I said, is only good while you're alive. Once you pass away, then your personal representative, if you have a will in place, the person you elected as your personal representative then takes over and handles your estate. Okay, basically just, just your, making the distributions of, if you, if, say if you left something to somebody, making sure that they get those things, and also paying your debts. But right now we're talking about power of attorneys. So like I said, a power of attorney is a legal document that you, you're giving somebody, if you're incapacitated, you're giving somebody the power to make your financial decisions for you if you can. Now why should you have a power of attorney? Well, if you don't have a power of attorney in place, what's going to happen is if you become incapacitated, your loved ones, friends, or whoever it may be, are going to have to go to court and petition to become your guardian or conservator or both. Okay. And that takes a lot of time. As we know, the court systems do not move very fast. And that can take a lot of money as well. By having a power of attorney in place, which can be done pretty inexpensively, okay, you're going to save your loved ones a lot of aggravation and time in the long run, and money as well. Okay. So you want to have the document in place. Okay. And plus two, you want to be able to decide who's going to make your financial decisions for you if you can if you're incapacitated and somebody's going to court to petition to be your power of attorney, are you, do you have a choice? You really don't have a choice. It's really up to who? The judge. Okay? It's the judge who's making that decision. So you want to have a power of attorney in place. What does the word durable mean? Well, simply, when I, you, you, a lot of times you hear durable power of attorney. The word durable means, essentially, it just, it, it's, the document is still good even after you become incapacitated. Okay? Now let me say this, if you guys have any questions at all, please interrupt me at any time. Now you have me for the next half hour, 45 minutes to talk about power of attorneys and healthcare proxies. Ask me anything you like while you have. After the 45 minutes, I'm going to start charging you. So make sure you get your questions in now. Good luck to you. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Based upon how much you paid for breakfast this morning, I guess I'm not going to pay. Sir. <laughs> You know, should they have a second in charge also? We'll get to that, and the answer to your question is yes. If I'm in a car driving along, I got my buddy power attorney. Yes. We have an active both. You know, Absolutely. Out. I always recommend that you have two people in place. You have a primary and you have a backup. Because what if your primary may predecease you. Okay. Yeah. Um, so you always want to make sure you have a backup in place, and we were going to get to that. Uh, absolutely. I definitely I believe that. Um, when does it take effect? Well, there's several types of power of attorneys. The most um, common power of attorney is called a springing power of attorney. Now, a springing power of attorney, this is what I have, and I'm sure the majority of you have a springing power of attorney in place. Basically, what it means is that if you, I become, I'll just use myself for an example here. If I go out, say I leave here today, and I go out and get in a car accident, and I'm in a coma, and they send me to the hospital, okay? I go to the hospital, the doctor puts something right, he says, Jason is in, incapable of making decisions, he's not lucid at this time. At that moment, my wife, who's my power of attorney, springs into effect. She's now in charge, making my financial decisions for me. Okay? That's what a springing power of attorney is. Okay? The other type is a permanent or an immediate power of attorney. Now, I've been practicing law for about five years now. I've probably drafted close to 60 to 70 power of attorneys, and I've only drafted one immediate power of attorney. Okay. And an immediate power of attorney, basically what it is, once you sign the document, it's in effect. Which means that 
That person you elected as your power of attorney is now making your financial decisions for you at that moment. Now, what are some of the reasons why somebody might want to have something in place? Um, uh, one minute, sir. Yeah. Um, the person that I drafted the immediate power of attorney for, she was going to have surgery. And she was going to be incapacitated for several months. So at that moment, we signed the document. She wanted to have something in place immediately so that her son would be able to make her financial decisions for her at that moment. Sir? You sort of answered it, actually, uh, in the second part here. Uh, do the, does the person have medical power of attorney if you're in a coma or something of that type? Or is that a Two separate, separate documents. You get, in what we're talking about today is so yeah. you get the power of attorney, the, the durable power of attorney is for your financial decisions. Okay. Your healthcare proxy, which yeah. you're referring to, is for your medical decisions, and we'll talk about that as well. Okay. Uh, so, like I said, the most common power of attorney is a springing power of attorney. And like I said, I'm guessing the majority of you do have power of attorneys here. They probably have a springing power of attorney. If you become incapacitated, the doctor puts something in writing, boom, the document's now in effect. Okay. Right now, you probably have, like, for instance, I'll use myself example again. I have a document in place, a valid power of attorney in place that was signed. Um, but my wife had... She has, well, she has all power over me right now, but, 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 but she, she technically does not have the power, say for my business on the side, okay, she does not have the power to go in and write checks for the business or anything like that. Once my power, once I become incapacitated, doc can put something in writing, it springs into effect, then she has the power she could actually write checks for the business and things like that. Obviously for personal, everything in our name is jointly. So obviously she can do whatever she likes. So, so that's what a power of attorney is and that's how it takes effect. Do you give up your rights permanently? No, it's a revocable document. You can change your mind at any time, okay? So say I'm gonna use Chandler as my example here. Say Chandler and I, um, say I decide I'm gonna name Chandler as my power of attorney. Okay, and Joe's going to be my backup. Okay, and so Chandler's going to be in charge of my millions if I become incapacitated. I don't know if that's a good decision. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good. He'll take fifty percent. Yeah, yeah. Chan I'll, I'll see Chandler out in Tahiti somewhere. <laughs> so Chandler's my power of attorney. So we go to my attorney, sir. Your first name is sir. John. John. So John, you're my attorney. We go to your office and we sign your power. We sign the power of attorney. And I say to Chandler, hey, let's go out and celebrate. So we go down to the local pub and we start throwing the, the, the drinks back one by one after the other. And then we get an argument over, say, politics or whatever it may be. And I said, that's it, Chandler. You're done. You're not my power of attorney. Okay? I go back to my attorney, John. And I said, I want Chandler out. Let's draft a whole new document. And I want Joe to be my power of attorney now. My point is, you can change your mind any time. The only time you can't change your mind is if you become incapacitated. So say if I get an accident, I'm in a coma, or say I'm, say I'm, 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 I'm coherent, but I'm, I'm not thinking clearly, I can't go and say, hey, you know what, I want Chandler out, I want Joe in. Okay? I can't do that, okay? Because I'm not considered competent at that time. So that's the only time I can't revoke that document, but it is a revocable document. Same with the healthcare proxy as well. Uh, can, I had this question asked to me of a client once. Can myself as a power of attorney, as, in, a lot of times when you're somebody's power of attorney, it's also called agent or attorney in fact, you can use any of that terminology. Okay? But I'll just stick with power of attorney here to keep it easy. I had a woman come to me and she said, my mother doesn't have a power of attorney in place. She wants to name me as her power of attorney. But I'm a little apprehensive about doing that because she has a ton of debt. She says to me, am I going to be responsible for my mother's debt? The answer is no. Okay? Mom's debt is paid by mom's finances. Okay? You're not responsible unless there is an exception for everything, especially in law. Okay? Unless you're not acting, as their power of attorney, you're not act acting in good faith. So, for instance, say if I, Chandler's my power of attorney, I'm in a hospital bed somewhere, and all of a sudden Chandler's driving around with a brand new Corvette. Okay? Okay? Who's responsible for that debt? Chandler. Chandler, absolutely, because he's not acting in good faith. 
as somebody's power of attorney, you spo you're supposed to be acting within the best interests of the person that you're acting as a power of attorney for. Okay, is Chandler acting in my best interest, driving around in a brand new red Corvette? Absolutely not. I don't get any. I don't get any use out of it. I'm in a hospital bed somewhere. You don't like red. I'm sorry. Purple. Okay. Yes, sir. What if you're leaving a sum of money to a child or your wife or, or whatever? Okay. It is now in her possession. Do the courts rule against that? In terms of the. Well, are you you leaving it in a will? Yeah, I mean, this is okay. a will. Well, this is a different thing. Now you're still. The power of attorney is immediately terminated once you pass away. Yeah. So, say, we're well, going to use Chandler again as my example. Chandler's my power of attorney. I'm alive. Okay, he's, make, he's, he's writing checks for me. He's paying my mortgage. He's doing, you know, he's doing everything that I would be able to do if I was, if I was competent. Blue Ecuador. E Ecuador, <laughs> yes. I pass away. He's done. His duties are done. Okay, right. completed that. Stops right then and there. Okay. Okay. Chandler has done as my power of attorney. It, it completely terminated. Now who's in charge? And say I'll use Joe as my example. I named Joe as my personal representative, which used to be called executor. Joe's now in charge. Okay. So now the will takes over. Yes. Okay. The will takes over. Now Joe's duty is now to basically make sure that the people that wrote. The people that you wrote in your will that you want to receive, say yeah. you wanted to give $10,000 to a grandchild. Yeah. Okay. Joe's responsibility now is to make sure that that grandchild gets that $10,000. Okay. Now, one of the things that, and we're not, we're not really touching upon this today, is that the power, the, 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 the role of the personal representative is to make sure that all the debts get paid, if there are debt out there, first before that grandchild gets a $10,000. That grandchild may not get the ten thousand dollars because debt has to be paid first. Okay. Good, good, good. Um, so that answers the question about whether they can be liable for the X. Can you pay your attorney, in fact, your agent or your power of attorney? Absolutely. Okay. You can put a figure in there if you like, but typically they're they're entitled to reasonable compensation. Now, what's reasonable compensation? It's basically whatever the judge determines is reasonable enough. Now, I had a client that her mom passed away, and she was acting at the time it was called executor. Now it's personal representative. I know it's confusing. She was acting as the executor to her mom's estate. And has anybody ever been an executor to somebody's estate before? It's a lot of work. It certainly is. It's a lot of work. Got to file yeah. returns too. Oh, it's it's a lot of work. So she was acting as mom's personal representative, and she did a ton of work. Well, she was taking time outside of, out, out of work to be able to do these duties, and she wanted to be compensated for her time. So she put in for $25 an hour for all the work she did, and that was okayed by the judge. Okay? That was considered reasonable. Okay? So you're entitled to reasonable compensation. Can you have more than one attorney, in fact? Now, this is a question you would ask, sir, before. Yeah. Um, Yes, I always recommend any good estate planning attorney is going to recommend to you that you have that you have a primary and you have a backup. Okay, because what if that primary predeceases you and you don't have a backup named? Okay, you got a problem. Okay, and the court's going to decide who's going to be a power of attorney, and that's the whole thing you tried to avoid in the in the beginning. You want to be able to decide who's going to handle your affairs for yourself. So you want to have a primary to backup. Question I get a lot is, can I name two people in the primary position? Uh, yes. Do I recommend it? No. Okay. What if they don't agree? Yeah. <laughs> you got a problem. Okay. So I always recommend you have one in the primary position and one in the backup position, the secondary. Okay. What records should your power of attorney keep? Now, in Massachusetts, a copy of a power of attorney is useless. Okay. You need to have an original document in place. So when I when I have when I have a client and, and they come to me and say, you know, usually I get a phone call that says I need a will. Okay. Um, and, and most estate planning attorneys, what they'll do is, in addition to giving you a will, they'll give they'll draft you a health care proxy and a power of attorney as well. Now in Massachusetts, the only document where a copy is useless is a power of attorney. So when I execute the documents, basically. How the process goes is that you come to me, we sit down, and we talk about the documents you need. I draft the documents. I send the documents to you for your review. If they're okay, then 
we then execute the documents. And that's the day we sign the documents. And once we sign them, they were in effect. The only document where, like I said before, the only document where a copy is, use, uh, where a copy is useless is the power of attorney. So in execution day, I always draft the power of attorney in triplicate. So there's three originals out there. I typically, keep, keep, I typically keep an original, the client keeps an original, and the person that's their primary power of attorney will have an original as well. You must have an original copy to be able to do any kind of work as a power of attorney, whether it's go to the bank or, or anything like that. Okay, You can have an original. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. A uh, question I get a lot is, can I add a relative's name to my bank account and avoid having a power of attorney? Anybody have a relative's name on their bank accounts with them? Okay. Oh, yeah. Now, a lot of people do that, and that's okay. okay. But the thing you need to keep in mind is that once you pass away, you need to understand that the person that's on the bank account with you, that's all their money. That's everything. Now, I had, I had somebody ask me once, like, I got four kids. She said, I don't have four kids. Thank goodness. <laughs> Holy smokes. But the woman had four kids. And she said, well, my oldest is on my bank account with me. And the only reason she's on there is for convenience purposes only, to be able to help me out. But I don't want her to have everything when I pass away. I want to make sure that that money is distributed evenly in four ways. Now, if she passes away, that money is the oldest and that's it. She doesn't have to share it at all with anybody else. Okay? Unless you have something in writing that says that I put so-and-so's name on that account for convenience purposes only. Now, I put I, several clients of mine have done that and I put it right in their will that so-and-so is placed upon this account as a joint owner of the account strictly for convenience purposes only. That what, and, and it, said, it also would say, I wish that this money is to be probated within my estate and distributed evenly with all of my kids. Okay, So you want to keep that in mind. If you do have a child's name on your account, it's their money. Once it, and maybe that's if you have one child, um, maybe that's what you want and that makes it so much easier and it passes outside of probate court. I mean you hear a lot of people talking about you want to avoid probate at all costs. Um, you know, probate can be a long, long process, so it does make it easier if you can avoid probate in several situations. Massachusetts sure. use in trust for? Do you use that here? Because I'm not from Massachusetts. In trust for? The account. Like in New York, they actually say Alan Barra in trust for Nick Fiorello. Uh, no, York. but they How could do they could do a payable on death. Payable on P -O -D. P Yeah, POD. Okay. Yeah. That, they can do that as well okay. in Massachusetts as well. Sir? If you don't add that statement <clears throat> about being uh, on your account and in fact you do pass away uh, but in your will you say I want each of my children to be equally distributed of the out of that particular life. account yeah does it matter does it matter the, the what the that passes outside of probate so as far as your will goes that account doesn't even exist okay because that passes outside of probate and that supersedes your will same thing with life insurance Okay, life insurance, um, you want to make sure that um, you have a beneficiary of life insurance because that will pass outside of your will, outside of the probate court. You could put, some, you could put a clause in your will and it would be useless, say that I want to make sure that uh, my three kids get my life insurance policy evenly. But they're not going to go by that. They're going to go by whatever the beneficiary designation is with the company. And that's who's going to get the money. So you got to make sure you have something like that in writing. I have my daughter on my on my checking account, so it can do like you said. Go right to her. Yeah. Okay. And does next she have to pay bills with that, or she just take the money and go? Church. Go. Church. She yep. can respond to for my debt. I've got Only it. the money that's in your estate is responsible for your debt. Well, I have no estate. <laughs> Everybody has an estate. That sweatshirt you're wearing, sir, is your estate. Well, that's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody has an estate. Any questions at all on power of attorney at all before we get into health care proxy? How many names have to be on the power of attorney? Well, I recommend that you have two, a primary and a backup. Seven. A person who it says that they have power of attorney, 
have to have that in writing on a piece of paper to know that they did sign that? Yes. And what happens if they didn't sign that? Then they're not the power of attorney. Well, that's what I've been going through in the last 10 years. Yeah. So it's got it. You know, the, the power of the, you know, the, the pen is mightier than the sword. And in this case, especially in legal legal stuff, um, you've got to have it in writing. Simple as that. And you're not going to take, they're not going to take somebody's word for it. It just it doesn't happen. Um, so it's got to be in writing. And it has to be an original signature. You can't have a copy, but a for help, for, for a power of attorney, it's yeah. got to be an original Written. document. Yeah. Yep. Notarized? Notarized. And notarized. And notarized. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So. Any other questions? Yeah. Right. So my, I'm my boy is to have yeah. a medical, so that there's no funeral expenses. What well, oh. if she dies before me? Also. What if your daughter dies before you? Yeah. Well, remember, remember, when you die, your power of attorney is terminated. It's the person you named in your will as your personal representative. Is that your daughter as well? No will. Okay. Okay. Well, we should have a will in place, but. Um, what happens is that somebody's going to have to go to court and be appointed as your personal representative. There's too much time involved. They're going to get your body when it's nice and fresh. You're in a hobby. Just right, but they, you know, not, not to sound, not to sound uh, uh, morbid, but <laughs> the court doesn't care about your body. Yeah. They care about your estate. Yeah. They want to care. They care about you know how much money you got in your estate and make sure it's done properly and everything's distri distributed. Uh, distribution wise, make sure it's done properly. Because I know I left that on my refrigerator. It says if I die. Mm -hmm. say when. See what they're supposed to do. Send my body to Harvard. I'm going to school. Okay. Finally. I'm going back to school. Yeah. Nice. Finally nice. going to college. Yeah. 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 Nice. Yeah. nice. Yeah. Okay, healthcare <coughs> proxies. Healthcare proxy is a legal document as well. Okay. A healthcare proxy is a legal document. If you become incapacitated, you're appointing somebody to make your medical decisions for you if you can't. Okay, that's what a healthcare proxy is. Why should you have one? Everybody remember the Terry Schiavo case in Florida several years ago? That poor woman was in bed and. Sir, did you have a question? No, I remember. Yeah, okay. Um, the Terry Schiavo case, that poor woman was in bed um, completely incapacitated. And her husband fought for years against her parents to take her off life support. Can you imagine how much stress and aggravation and money that was spent? Too much. Too much. If she had just had a document in place, she would have avoided that whole situation. That's what a health care proxy does. Is you're naming somebody to make your medical decisions for you, if you can't. Okay. Who should be your agent? Well, I always say this. And same thing with power of attorney. Pick somebody you trust. It doesn't have to be your spouse. It doesn't have to be your children. Pick somebody you trust. I was given this talk several years ago when my wife was pregnant with my first with our first child. And she did, she was off work that day and she wanted to come surprise me. And I was given this talk in Danvers. And she came and um, she came and sat in the back of the room. And at that point, somebody had asked me, Who do you pick as your health care proxy, your power of attorney? And I said, well, you pick somebody you trust. You don't have to pick your wife. Oh, did I get a death look? <laughs> you are kinky open. Yes. <laughs> but it's true. You don't have to pick your spouse. You don't have to pick your children. You pick somebody you trust. Okay. Because um, you want to make sure they, they, they make sure they follow your wishes by the letter of the law. Okay. Um, I had a client, her name was her name was Rose. And she had two adult children, okay? And I was doing her estate plan, and I, and I said to her, I Rose, who do you want to be your executor? Like I said, we named who's the executor back then. Who do you want to be your executor? She says, well, I'll pick, I'll pick John, and then the backup, I'll pick my daughter. She had two kids, John and Janice. And I'll pick Janice as the backup. I said, all right, no problem. Who do you want to be as your power of attorney? Well, I'll pick John. John's good with money, and I'll pick Janice as the backup. Not a problem. Who do you want to pick as your health care proxy? Well, I have to pick Janice. I said, okay, why do you have to pick Janice? <coughs> because she'll be upset if I don't pick her first. Oh, <laughs> I said, okay, okay. I said, let me ask you this, Rose. If Janice has to make a decision that may lead to, you know, her taking you off life support, would she be able to do that? 
Oh no. She keep me alive forever like Ted Williams. Okay? Okay. I said, okay, let me ask you this. Would John be able to make that decision? Oh yes, he's cold as a cucumber. Okay. Okay. I said, well, as your attorney, I strongly recommend that you pick John. Because you want to have somebody that's going to follow your wishes to let her love. Same thing in my case with my mom. I'm the primary for my mother for everything because my sister, I know, would keep my mother alive forever. Okay? And my mother, basically, whatever my mom wants, she gets. Okay? And she wants you know, follow her wishes to the letter of the law. And that's something you want to keep in mind. You pick somebody you trust. Don't you ask your relative, though, that, that you're signing here? What would happen if, uh, you know, you're in a coma and uh, you'll be that, the doctor says you'll be this way for the next 20 years or something? What? Uh, well, you want to add, obviously the person you, you want to elect as your power of attorney, your healthcare yeah. proxy, you want to talk to them about that first. Right. Yeah. And see if that's something they can handle. Because it's, yeah. it's a tough, that's a tough position to be in. To pull the plug, it's, it is. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, not many people can do that. You know, um, it's a tough decision to make. So you want to make sure you talk to about talk to him about that before you I've do. I've already talked to my daughter about it. Oh, good. That I want no life support. Good. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Good. Um, what is a medical medical directive or living will? Now, you probably all have a living will before. A living will is not a legal document in Massachusetts, believe it or not. Okay. A living will, I call it a personal wishes document. It can be called advanced directives. It can be called many things. A living will is not a legal document in Massachusetts. All it does is give specific situations that you may be in and that you want, you want to be taken off life support or kept on life support. Okay? Most uh, good estate planning attorneys, what they do is they attach a living will to your health care proxy. And all it does is give your health care proxy, the person you elected as your agent, more information to work with when they have to make a decision on your behalf. That's all it does. Do they have to follow that? No. That's why it comes back to pick somebody you trust to be your health care proxy, because you want them to follow your wishes. So that's what a living will health care a living will or medical directive is. When does it take effect? Well, like I said, it's a, before, it's a revocable document. Okay. Um, it's revocable. You can change your mind at any time, unless you become incapacitated and you're not thinking clearly, you're not lucid, then you can't revoke it at that time. Okay? But it is a revocable document. You can change your mind at any time, who you, want, who you want to pick as your agents. What happens if you can communicate your wishes? Well, at that time, the doctor will put something in writing that says that Jason's doing fine at this time. And um, at that moment, say I'm using Chandler for my example again, Chandler is not my, he is, his ter he's terminated as my health care proxy. Okay? He has no more powers. He can't make any more medical decisions. Does that mean I have to draft a whole new document? No. Okay. That document is still good, which means that, say, a week later I get in another car accident, I'm back in the coma, doctor puts something in writing and says, Jason is, in, is not competent at this time. At that moment, Chandler springs back into effect and is now my health care proxy. Because the document, so the document is still good. And who should have a copy of your health care proxy? Well, a copy of your health care proxy is good. Okay? With a power of attorney, you have to have an original. With a health care proxy, a copy is okay. Now, I, I, I recommend that you have several copies, and I usually supply four or five copies of the health care proxy to the client so they can give it to all their doctors, give it to their, their family members. You want to make sure all your doctors have a copy of your health care proxy. Okay? Any questions at all on health care proxy? Yeah, I just, yes, I just signed a what they call five wishes yes. for my doctor. Yep. And I had put down my son as my... Uh, Health care proxy? Yeah. Yep. And, uh, and we signed, we made out the papers together. I took them to the doctor, and he made a copy for me to yep. put among my private papers. Sure. Uh, so... Do you have a healthcare proxy in place? No. You st still recommend that you do have one in place, though. I see. That, yes. That's my wishes doesn't cover that, huh? Well, it's, um, um, it, 
I think you'll be okay with the five witches, but I still recommend that you do have a health care proxy in place. I see. Yeah. And what is five wishes? Five wishes, you know, I don't know a lot about five wishes. Five wishes is a document, basically, did you have to have that notarized, sir? No. No, okay. The five wishes is basically a document you put, uh, for you. it's for all for medical reasons. Yeah, right? you, yeah. You put down, I put down my son in my primary. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it basically gives a lot of information of what you want to happen in a medical situation. And we, we made out the papers together. Yes. And it was my wishes. You know. Yes. Yes. Any other questions? Um, if you go into a coma in the hospital, does the doctor automatically say this guy can't do anything? Well, doctor this? will put something in writing, whether he does puts he it in the chart or yeah, chart. puts it in a chart or something. It, it you know, that Joe's not competent at this time. At that moment, that's all. That's all the information you'll need to know that the person you elected as your power of attorney, health care proxy, and now in charge, making your decision. So it's just what he said. Right. Yeah. Put it in writing. You know, whether it's in a chart or whatever it may be. Yeah. Absolutely. Any other questions? I like up my daughter as my primary, and my son-in-law is my husband as the backup. Second. Oh, good. How much of these things cost to be done to have these things? Well, you know, it, it depends. I mean, uh, a dollar, a thousand dollars. You're probably looking five hundred to fifteen hundred dollars. Wow. Yeah. For what a lawyer? For a lawyer. Yeah. If you yeah, it, now, you don't need a lawyer to draft these documents. Just see. I, I had a lawyer right here in Groveland to mine. Yeah. With my daughter. Good. We went together. Good. Good. But it's going to cost a lot of money to do these. I well, paid a thousand dollars. You're really paying for the. You're paying the will. Paying for the will. Yeah. I paid a thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah. It's usually all incorporated. Once you have a will, many of these items like you said earlier. It's all. It's really all courtesy. You get the rest of the documents yeah. and really courtesy. Yeah. yeah. But it, it varies. Some attorneys are different. So. But you need a lawyer. You don't. Here, if you, you can do it on the internet as well if you don't. But I. Uh, but do I recommend I'm it? I'm no. legally blind and I can't even see a computer. Right. Well, then that's. You need help from your children or something. Someone yeah. to take right. a hand. Yeah. And right. my lawyer. Yep. Jason, I'd yes, like to say something to all of you. It's sort of on this line. If you have an IRA, yes. you must have a beneficiary. Yes. It immediately goes to the estate. It's yes. locked up in the estate. Yep. That's right. Make sure anybody, you say, oh, I only got a few thousand in it. doesn't matter. Make IRA. Sure any IRA. Life insurance. Life, you have a beneficiary. Yes. They will pay it out, but it immediately must go to the estate. If you, you don't, don't have, have a beneficiary, you don't in place. have a beneficiary. You must right. do that. It goes directly to your estate. That's so, right. And they'll get it. And you want to but avoid the, that. The IRS immediately Grab it. It. grabs it. If, if you don't have a lot of writing from a lawyer, the state will step in and take a that. good pleasure of everything. But the IRS. Right? Possibly. Possibly. I mean, every you know, every situation is different. Yeah. Yeah. But you want to have, you definitely want to have your affairs in order and have your documents in place. I strongly recommend that. Al, you can always leave your money to me. <laughs> old yeah, old he doesn't have any money. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.